Hi, my name is Wei Dai, and today we'll be talking about chain reductions for multi-signatures and the HBMS scheme. And this is joint work with Mihir Bellari. So what are multi-signatures? Multi-signatures allow a collection of signers to endorse on a common message with a short signature. And we'll require that each signer to be able to generate their keys independently by running a key uh, generation algorithm. Signing is a multi-run protocol between any number of n parties. They take input, the message to be signed, as well as a vector of public keys denoting the participants. At the end, they should return a short signature sigma. By short, uh, we mean that the length of the signature should be independent of the number of signing parties n. Verification takes a list of public keys and a message and a ledger signature to return a Boolean value. Key aggregation is an optional feature for multi-signature schemes. And we say that a scheme supports key aggregation if there are two additional algorithms. First, key aggregation, which takes in a list of public keys to return one public key, that's what we call the aggregate public key. And we require that the length of aggregated public key to be about the same length as regular public key. Now, verification instead takes in an aggregated public key, message, and a signature to return a Boolean value. To replicate the same syntax as standard verification, we define the following verification algorithm to be simply the composition of key aggregation and verification. For security, we ask for MSUF CMA security, which is encapsulated in the following game. Here, the adversary obtains from the initialization oracle of the game a random public key, the, which we call the target public key. And to win the game, it must supply a forgery signature uh, that is uh, must be valid for the list of public keys which contains the target public key. To help it succeed, the game exposes an interface using which the adversary can interact with the online signer arbitrarily in parallel. Uh, the adversary is able to control all keys beside, uh, besides the target public key. And we define the advantage of the adversary against the multi signature scheme to be simply the probability that the adversary breaks the following game. And here's a brief timeline of development of multi-signatures. It was first suggested almost 40 years ago now, and earlier constructions are susceptible to low-key attacks, or in other words, they're not secure against the notion that we just described. And there are two approaches to prevent low-key attacks. First requires uh, interactive key generation, which again does not satisfy the notion that we are considering. And the second approach is to assume the knowledge of uh, secret key assumption, which requires more complicated key generation algorithms. And one canonical scheme that achieves the security work we discussed in the previous slides is a discrete log based construction, uh, which we refer to as Blurry Neman construction. And it serves as a basis for the more, more recent multi signature schemes. That, uh, that people have looked at due to applications in blockchain settings, in particular to settings of multi signature wallets and in the consensus setting, uh, short certificate of finalized states. And following the most, more, more recent developments, Bitcoin has actually recently adopted short signatures. And there's a couple of uh, features of interest for multi signature schemes for uh, application blockchains. We like to obtain efficient schemes over common input curve groups without pairings, meaning the SEGP 256K1 curve or curve 25519, for example. We would like to ask for MSUF secure schemes in the plain public key model. And we would like two additional features. We would like our schemes to support key aggregation. And an example of this is music. And we would like our schemes to support two round signing. Uh, so standard signatures uh, such as BN and MUSIC have two round, have three round signing, and there's more recent development to push schemes to have more efficient signing protocols that involves only two rounds of interaction. However, the problem with 
trying to achieve all the above four features, especially the third and fourth one, is that they are in, at contention with concrete and provable security. And here's what we mean. So what happens when we look at concrete security? Well, on one hand, in practice, practitioners expect uh, schemes with proof of security to be able to instantiate it in any practical scheme, meaning they'll implement it on top of a curve that is of bit, bit length 256 bits. And we should expect some discrete log like 128 bit security. Uh, so this, this is the expectation practice. However, the picture is not as nice in theory. On one hand, we have standard model proofs using forking lemmas uh, incurring some reduction loss. And on the other hand, we have idealized assumptions, which uh, does not model all the possible attacks. So for example, for three-row multi-signature schemes, on one hand, we may expect 128-bit security when we instantiate BN and MUSIC. On the other hand, uh, the works that proposes schemes the reduction uh, that was given do not actually provide any security guarantees in the in in these um, groups of bit length 256. And moreover, when we move to two round multi signature schemes with heat aggregation, then the picture it's uh, a lot less uh, optimistic. And uh, most of the works aim to provide standard model reductions when possible. And as a result, the reductions uh, does not give any practical guarantee when we instantiate the schemes with 256-bit groups. And the last two row here, rows here are results derived in AGN because there's actually no known reductions that are a standard model reduction that, are, that, are, that can be uh, given for, for the schemes in question. So therefore, these work result, uh, resorted to AGN to prove security However, even in idealized models, uh, they were not able to prove uh, tight security. So here's our contribution in an analogy. And here's a DL tree, on top of which are some fruits. The previous results uh, claim things of the following form. They say, hey, look, we have some nice fruits somehow hanging on the DL tree. And somehow refers to the fact that we have uh, reductions from DL to the security of these schemes. However, these reductions are not tight, so they are somehow high on the tree. Whereas all results says the following. We say that, hey, these fruits are probably attached to uh, probably solid branches. Um, so these fruits are, are attached to branches that are probably solid. So there's two points here. One is that these schemes are attached to the branches, meaning the reduction between the scheme and the branches are tight both ways. And that this, these branches are probably solid means that they also are, uh, we, we give both type of reductions, both from standard model, they are non-tight, as well as tight AGM proofs for the hardness of these intermediate problems. And finally, we're able to uh, add another scheme to the picture, HBMS, which is two rounds, support scheme aggregation, and has the same uh, efficiency as music and uh, the previous uh, proposed multi-signature schemes. So let's go more into detail of our contrib contribution. First, for B BN music, we provide standard model guarantees as well as AGM guarantees to instantiate both schemes in practice on 256 bit curves. Now, our result relying on uh, uh, assuming the hardness of IDL and XIDL in the standard model. Our new scheme, HBMS, is the first scheme that has tight security in AGM, as well as emits security reductions in the standard model from DL. It's two rounds, supports a key aggregation, and is as efficient as previous proposed MUSIC2 and DWMS schemes. And there's more we can say from our results. Using our results, we can infer security between schemes, meaning we can say that if BN is secure, then so is MUSIC. Or if MUSIC is secure, then so is HBMS. We can make these claims because we make chain reductions, which are reductions 
of the form, we start from the hardest of the most commonly accepted hard problem, discrete algorithm, all the way to the security of the scheme in question. In the middle is an intermediate assumption, which we denote here as x. We require that the first part of the reduction chain to either be non-tight, but in the standard model, or be in the AGM, but tight. So we sacrifice uh, either working in the standard model or either trying to obtain uh, tight reductions. And the second part of reduction from the intermediate hard problem to the scheme, we make no sa uh, sacrifices, meaning we, we provide tight and standard model reductions from the intermediate hard problem to the security of the scheme. And by standard model here, a, a bit of a disclaimer, we are referring to the programmable rhetorical model. As, as opposed to, um, so by standard model we mean we do not make any idealized group assumptions. And moreover, we'll like the intermediate hard problem X to be reusable for different schemes. So here's the picture of our, of our results. We start from considering the identification logarithm assumption, which uh, was proposed by Kiltz, Maskey, and Penn to, uh, to be as hard as um, DL in the algebraic group model, which, uh, whose hardness can also be proved from DL using a for, uh, one application of the forking lemma. We showed that IDL is equivalent to BN, meaning IDL is as hard as breaking affordability of BN multi-signatures. And to uh, obtain a similar result for music, we have to consider a new intermediate hard problem, which we call random target identification logarithm. And from there, we're able to show uh, equivalent hardness between it and music. Similar to IDL, we show that XIDL is hard assuming DL in AGM or uh, hard assuming IDL in standard model via one application of the forking model. Finally, we have a new scheme, HBMS, which we prove from XIDL in the standard model with a reduction loss that's the number of signing queries, which in practice can be assumed uh, to be a lot, in practice is generally a lot smaller than the running time with number of order multiple queries. And additionally, our, our scheme can be proved tightly secure from assuming a hardness of DL in AGM. So for the rest of the talk, we'll be looking at components of the DL tree. First up, BN signatures, or BN multi-signatures, can be seen as a extension to short signatures to the multi-signature setting. Key generation simply samples a discrete log pair. Verification equation is as follows. On the right-hand side, we raise each public key to an exponent derived using the hash function. To generate a signature collectively, each signer will run the following protocol. First, they will sample random group element, which is committed to, and only the commitment is revealed across the wire to all the other signers. After receiving the commitment, each signer will open their commitment to the random group element R. The Rs are then aggregated, uh, but before that, each signer must check that the openings are correct, and they will abort if not. After the aggregation of, of the values of R, each signer will derive their challenge and response as shown. If M1 is doing this correctly, then at the end, the signers will, uh, each signer will obtain the correct multi-signature. The first two rounds can be seen as a collective coin flipping protocol to generate random group element R and attacks are possible if the first round is, is, is not done. And for security, BN showed the following um, reduction from, from DL. And for us, we want to prove tighter results. And by observing that the security of BN is more or less related to the security of, of Schnorr. And to do that, we will use identification logarithm uh, problem, first coined by Kills, Masny, and Pan. And its context is following. Schnorr signatures has been known for 30 years without attacks, at least in the, on the curve groups, or type proofs from DL. So, and additionally, type proofs from DL are impossible uh, according to um, results that we know. So, therefore, perhaps we should just encapsulate the underlying hard problem of, of Schnorr signatures in, it, in a problem of its own. This is a proposal by Kills, Massey, and Pan. 
In particular, we capture the exact hardness to break strong identification scheme. And it's captured in the game as follows. The adversary receives a, a random group element x and gets to query a challenge oracle up to q number of times, each time supplying a group element r of the choosing. And the game, in, uh, in response, choose a random element c from zp. And together with r, uh, this defines a group element r times x to the c, against which the adversary needs to compute a discrete log. And it succeeds if it is able to compute this discrete log z against any number uh, of the uh, q sessions. And given such results, we know uh, reductions uh, of the following form. What Q's masking and Pant did is that if we parameterize the ideal uh, problem, then we're able to show um, security of Schnorr tightly from it. And moreover, the link between DL and uh, IDL can be proved both in the center model and tightly in AGM. And this is what we'll replicate for BN signatures. In particular, we'll show that the BN signatures are tightly enforceable, assuming hardness of IDL by uh, concluding uh, theorems of the following forms. So now let's move on to the harder parts, which is how, how do we argue security for music, which is a key, um, which is BN plus key aggregation. How does music work? Uh, key generation is exactly the same as BN. And key aggregation aggregates a list of public keys into a single group element by simply raising each public key to an exponent derived using the hash function. Key verification now is exactly the verification for Snore signature, meaning on the right-hand side, we'll have R times aggregate public key uh, raised to the uh, exponent derived using the um, hash function. Uh, to generate a signature, the protocol is almost is identical to Snore, besides uh, for two places. One, the challenge is derived using the aggregate public key and it's derived in the same way for every signer. And second, we need to add in the key aggregation exponents in, in derivation of z. However, for proofs, uh, we no longer, uh, it, there's one additional complication of adding an additional forking lemma if we were to prove it assuming hardness of only DL. And indeed, if we plug the, um, if we plug in numbers, this decreases the base security uh, by a significant amount. And our solution is a new problem which we name random target IDL. It's extension to IDL in that adversary now has access to two oracles, new target and challenge. Each time the adversary creates a new target oracle with some group element S, there's a new target that's generated by the game, which is exactly uh, S times X raised to some uh, random exponent E. And now the challenge oracle additionally takes in an index indicating which uh, IDL session or against which target the adversary is trying to uh, break IDL. And at the end, the adversary wins if it wins IDL against uh, any number of the uh, pre previous Q1 sessions. So the claim is that if we're able, uh, if we encapsulate this in the assumption, namely IDL, then we can show security of music from it tightly. And here's how the reduction works. Uh, signing can be simulated exactly uh, as, as, as in BN, so we'll not show it here. The crux of the reduction comes from programming of the random oracles. For every query into the uh, random oracle in deriving the key aggregation exponents, we'll do the following. We'll first compute the, uh, the aggregated public key, but without uh, the target public key being inside the, the expression. I will forward this value, s, to the new target oracle. The response is then forwarded back to the adversary. The reason for this is that we want the, the aggregated public key to the point of view of the adversary to be equal to the target that is kept tracked in the XIDL game. Okay, so t is equal to apk. And for each query uh, into h1, we'll simply use the aggregated public key to find out the corresponding session that we're in and simply forward the r to the challenge oracle. And the response C is, is uh, forward, forwarded back to the adversary. So if everything is done correctly, then a forgery should allow us to pin down exactly one session for us to respond uh, with 
the, the second component of the signature, which is Z. And it works, this reduction works because we have programmed the S so that the upgraded public keys to the point of view of the adversary is exactly equal to the targets from the point of view of a reduction. So therefore, when we forward the R's, um, the forgeries will then co exactly correspond to the Z's that we need to produce. So therefore, we're able to com uh, conclude that in a standard model, if we assume that X at the L is hard, then music is also hard to forge. And furthermore, uh, we showed that if you have X at the L adversary, then we can break uh, or forge signatures for music. And it's very straightforward. We simply construct a forger that um, simulates another signer using the, the responses provided by uh, the XIDL adversary, and as well as programming the random worker points. So therefore, music is uh, as hard to forge as it is to break XIDL uh, as, 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 as a harness assumption. However, why do we believe XIDL is hard? Well, we apply the exact same principles as uh, how IDL is, is argued to be hard. Namely, we argue in the standard model using the Fourier lemma, we're tightly in, H, in, in AGM. So recall that AGM says in an inter interaction between an adversary and the game, an adversary is algebraic if its output group elements can be represented in, in terms of its input group elements. In, more in particular, for each output group element, the the adversary also provides a set of scalars k1 to kn so that if you raise xi to the ki and multiply them together then you get yj. So assuming we have an algebraic x ideal adversary it's easy to show that we can uh, make a reduction from dl. Because x ideal adversaries only receive two group elements from the game g and the random group element x and it provides the s S group elements and the R group elements. So these group elements must be represented in terms of G and X if, if the adversary is algebraic. Therefore, in the final equation that the adversary must satisfy, uh, it's only an equation in terms of G and X. So therefore, we're able to solve for the discrete log uh, of big X. All but, all but with some uh, bad probability that this equation is determined, which will compound. And in the standard model, we rely on usage of forking lemma, which relates the success probability of some algorithm taking random Q points for some set C into uh, a, a forked version of, of the algorithm in which is run twice with incorrect inputs. The crux of, the, of, of using the um, forking lemma is to specify what the algorithm A is. And for us, you'll be at the following form. We want to construct a reduction from XIDL to IDL, but there's a mixed match of oracles. XIDL uh, expects two oracles, new target and, and challenge, and our um, adversary, IDL adversary only, only have the challenge oracle. So therefore, we plug uh, in, we hook up the new target oracle against the challenge oracle given to our reduction, but simulate the challenge oracle for the XIDL adversary. And in, the, in the following way, we're able to define the, the forking algorithm to, uh, to simply take inputs, the, um, the simulations of the challenge oracle that it, that it expects. And if we run the forking algorithm on this uh, algorithm A, then, it, then a section of that means that we're able to compute the response for the corresponding IDL session. And this requires, uh, that, uh, requires the reduction adversary to, to to, to cleverly uh, keep track of the Oracle values and, and, uh, and, and, and use them as a response in the second run um, of, of the XIDL adversary. So therefore we're able to also conclude that XIDL is hard in standard model, assuming hardness of IDL with a score of Q2 uh, as, as a reduction loss. And so finally, let, let us look at uh, the HBMS scheme, which is two rounds and supports key aggregation, which can be shown to be secure in standard model from, I, uh, from, XI, from hardness of XIDL. HBMS works as follows. Key generation is exactly uh, the same as music. Key aggregation as well. The verification equation changes uh, on the left-hand side, where we've added in a power of a group element derived from uh, a hash function applied to the list of signers and the message. 
and it's raised to the exponent that is encoded in the signature. The claim is that if we change the verification equation uh, to the following form, then we're able to uh, uh, derive two round signing protocols. In particular, in the first round, we sample two random scalars instead. And the intuition here is that we have done a Peterson commitment to G to the R1. And we'll send uh, this new value uh, the, the, well, of the Peterson commitment to all the other signers. And now in the second round, we can simply compute the response Z exactly as before in music. And now send additionally the openings to the Peterson commitment, which is randomness R1. After we get back all the responses, we simply aggregate the S and the Zs and set them to be the components of the signature. So the only thing that I've changed here is that we have random, uh, we have hashed the list of public keys and message to a, to a group element and changed the um, first rounds into a Peterson complement and eliminated uh, the, the two rounds of, uh, condensed the two, first two rounds of point flipping into one. But in result, the signatures are slightly longer and verification equation have now changed. And we're able to prove security of HBMS from uh, XIDL. And the crux of this is, is how we program the random walker point. So the verification equation now have this additional term which relates, that relates to the output of a, of a random oracle and is crucially um, important to, uh, for us to be able to s both simulate signatures and uh, construct a reduction. And it turns out that this crucially depends on how we program the random oracle at this point. There's one option on one hand, if we program to the power of G, then we can, uh, similar to before, uh, turn forgery into a brief XIDL. However, we can no longer simulate um, the honest signer. If we set it to be a power of X, then we can do exactly the opposite. But we need to decide on this before uh, signing interaction starts. So therefore, we employ the uh, core route trick, which uh, guesses uh, which options to program with the parameter that we later optimize, resulting in a reduction loss of one over Q sign. And moreover, uh, we can show that this reduction loss is eliminated if we work directly in AGM.